Of the World Baseball Network with Bob Scanlon and Coach John Cantera, brought to you by Aladdin Bail Bonds on Double X Ten Ninety. Welcome back to the World Baseball Network, brought to you by Aladdin Bail Bonds. Bob Scanlon with you, the Coach John Cantera, taking the weekend off, and my oh my, some frustrated Padre fans out there. I certainly understand. And as we were talking about, I personally think the future for the Padres and the lifeblood of that organization will be their minor league system and bringing up some big arms. Our next guest is a guy that specializes in creating these big arms and keeping keeping them healthy alan jager the founder of jager sports joining us on the hotline alan how are you doing today i'm great bob how you doing i'm doing fantastic man appreciate you joining us today and uh i'd like to pick up where you and i left off in spring training we ran into each other out at a kansas city royals baseball game and we got into this great conversation about how to keep arms strong long tossing all the different things that i think both you and i believe in but a lot of people in professional sports have sort of pushed aside so i'll give you a chance to get into all that but first why don't you give us a little history about how you started up jager sports well, back in uh, my playing days in uh, 1926, I mean 1986, <laughs> <laughs> out of Cal State North, is one of your good buddies, Jim Batcher. Uh, I um, I actually first got in the metal part of the game. I, I wrote a book in the early 90s. Uh, my my influence really came from Zen and a lot of the Far Eastern stuff and meditation and uh, and. So it was partly that. I, I was always a big long toss guy. You know, I pitched most of my life and. Um, I just kind of fell on the long toss because to me it was instinctive, it was natural, and it was something that uh, not only made sense, but once I started teaching players how to do it, it, the feedback was ridiculous. I mean, guys just, not only did they get stronger, but maybe as important as anything, they, they just felt well-conditioned. They felt like animals, and uh, they had great recovery period. Uh, bullpens were nothing, and so long story short, I just I kind of took, the mental stuff. I took the the throwing program. I was a pitching coach at a JC for about three years, and uh, you know I do mechanical stuff too. But really, I'm mostly about uh, arm strength and conditioning in the mental game. And and the last thing is that I studied yoga in the early '90s. So I kind of kind of merged all three of those together, if you will. Yeah, and it says you have the arm conditioning and strength, mental training, flexibility and balance. Three areas that a lot of guys just aren't aware of, and they don't spend enough time on. And I think a lot of professional organizations, and certainly colleges and high schools as, as well probably don't focus on as much as they do and I, I want to stick with the arm conditioning side of it first I mean we're talking about the long toss that was something that I always did back in Little League all through high school all through my professional career and yet now I know there's actually organizations that forbid it what what's your experience been with the long tossing and I know Joel Zamaya has been one of your guys I mean you're getting some guys to have four or five more miles an hour on, on their velocity well you know I like you you know, we talked about this in Arizona. I mean, the bottom line is that I think before the 1990s when, quote-unquote, rehab programs were popularized because of surgery, um, you know, the reality of it is, Bob, is that uh, if there wasn't a throwing program out there, guys would long toss because it's, it's natural to the body. It's instinctive. It feels good. It feels right. You know, you throw a football with, with some arc on it it feels good to the arm. So long toss is inherently natural, and that's the – that's the most perplexing part to me about dealing with organizations or people that don't that aren't in the long toss. And I've, I've found out a lot of them. It's just because they either never played, they've never long tossed before, or it's just protocol from more of a medical theory from from rehabilitation. So, I guess my my answer is is that. Um, People like yourself who've been around the game, uh, if there wasn't a throwing program out there, they'd long toss. And, uh, and this, this 120, I call it really more of an artificial or synthetic program that was developed, again, out of a rehab mentality. It's almost something that, that feels homogenous. It's controllable. When you go to spring training, you know, you can put everybody on a 10-minute program and call it a day. And uh, if someone, uh, the, the theory is no one's going to break down or blow out at 120 feet. So these big signing bonuses that started happening in the 90s and then, the, you know, the multi-year deals that started happening in the 90s, you know, all of a sudden it, it, it kind of helped coaches, you know, take you know, not not take the blame per se, and it became safe. And the irony is, it's the opposite. It's not safe. It's actually dangerous. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's all about a lot of times just somebody trying to cover their tail and make sure that they don't have any responsibility or accountability. But at the on the other side of it, they're not allowing the athlete to to expand and be all they can be. Exactly. And it's not just the. I mean. There's all kinds of stories, and I don't want to spend a lot of time on it about organizations that actually forbid it. And you've had guys that have been, you know, pitchers of the years in an organization, and the guy goes and tells the organization, "Hey, I've been long tossing." They say, "Well, we don't ever see you do that again." But it's not just. I'm sure there's other things that are involved in the exercises and, and programs that you have to strengthen up guys' arms. Well, number one, of course, is you know, long toss to me is the king. 
it, it's really what there's there's just no substitution for it. If you if you want to build a healthy, strong, durable arm with good recovery period, which is all the key things you'd really not not to mention feel and really I think a lot of the mental parts of the game come out of it because you, you're you're throwing so much in so many different increments from 60 feet for some guys out to 350 feet back. You're actually developing feel, release point. So there's there's hundreds of benefits from long toss. But the other big thing we, we push hard is, is surgical tubing. We have a whole arm care program. Um, uh, to me, it's a no-brainer because it is, it's exactly what you do if you had to rehab the arm. The difference is we do it before the guys go out and throw. Every, every time, by the way, it's 100%. And we just call it prehab versus rehab. And, you know, if you're a pitcher out there or you're a baseball player out there and you care about your arm, um, it, there's, it's, it's no more just go out and throw the ball and play catch. You know, you, you better be into some kind of an arm care program prior to going out and throwing. Alan Jager, the founder of Jager Sports, is joining us. Alan, uh, talk a little bit about maybe the different regimens you have for young athletes versus your professional athletes at what age is it okay for these kids to start doing these types of things to get that good arm strength going well i'd say just for habit building with tubing i'd start them as early as eight um, obviously it comes down to whether or not a, a, a kid is mature enough and, and interested enough but you know by the time they're 10 11 12 12 12 and 13 seem to be the age where you know you better kind of get on the the wagon at that point um or you know what i mean it's like learning a language you start getting really behind the curve so i'd say tubing wise and arm care stuff you know 10 11 12 you know 12 13 is really where you kind of don't want to miss the boy long toss to me is, is relative you know an eight-year-old can long toss as long as he's doing symbolically the right things meaning he's not in a rush to get off the field he's letting his arm breathe and stretch out you know according to its needs he's he's not being told to rush off the field and he has a little bit of an idea of how to throw the ball with a little bit of angle a little bit of arc so he learns how to stretch his arm out um i think the key is really the younger kids versus the older kids it's probably obviously a little bit more about quantity and distance but the the mentality is the same you want to go out and throw really as often as you can and if you need a day off take a day off but i'm not talking about getting on a mound and throwing all the time i'm talking about just for conditioning and arm strength purposes, you know, just get out to the field like you were when you were a little kid and just throw the ball and call it whatever you want, but stretch your arm out and just don't be in a hurry to go take BP or, or ground balls or rush off the field because sometimes even as a 10-year-old, you'll throw the ball maybe only 100, 120 feet, but you may want to stay out there for 8 or 10 minutes because it just feels good. And if, if you didn't know better, you would stay out there. And if someone's rushing you off the field, to me you're missing a very critical moment in your life where the arm is going to start learning how to generate uh, life, if you will, in it. And, and, Alan, what's your take on pitch counts? Because uh, I think in a lot of ways some guys are overprotected on the pitch counts. That's just my personal take on it. Do you have an opinion on it as far as the professional athletes go and also as far as Little League? I mean, do you have it at some point, but eventually guys should be able to allow to stretch it out a bit? Yeah, and it's a great question, and it comes up a lot. And the, the irony is that I'll start first at the professional level. You know, pitch counts are necessary at the professional level because a lot of organizations have bought into this 120-foot program, so they're, they're radically under-conditioning the arms, and therefore they have to radically be paranoid about how many pitches they throw in a game because they can't handle the workload. It's a, it's a total catch-22. That is such a great foot. point. I have never – you know what? We didn't talk about that in spring training, and I never thought of it that way, but it's so true. If you haven't, you know, trained yourself – in, in that respect also, in terms of the long tossing and getting your arm used to that, then of course you're not going to be able to pitch more than 100 or 110 pitches. Yeah, now the, the flip side, if you take Daisuke before, when he first came out, the first year Boston actually left him alone and let him do his thing. Mm -hmm. He's throwing 150, 180, you know, legendary bullpens. And, and I know it sounds a little extreme, and it probably is, but the point is it's because it's he can. It, 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 you know, uh, we have certain players like Azito or Heron who I just know they're they're just animals. They can throw all day, so to speak. And <laughs> and there's no such thing as a pitch count. There's a kid at UCLA right now. We've done some work with Trevor Bauer, where everybody's freaking out about his pitch count. Well, he'd be in trouble if you put a pitch count on him. And uh, and, and and the point is, yes, in pro pro professional baseball, because of how much they've babied the arms and implemented this very restricted program, in a in a in a, in a comical kind of way, they they need a pitch count to match it. But I. I'm cool with it with the younger levels, you know, because it just makes sense to, you know, to be smart about, you know, how many pitches a kid throw off a mound. As you know, there's a difference between pitches and stressful pitches. There's a difference between throwing, you know, 80 pitches one day, which may not be the, really a bad thing at all, versus you throw 40 pitches on a Tuesday and then you throw 40 pitches on a Wednesday. I mean, that's when you're, you're asking for trouble. So I'm not so much into the pitch counts. Uh, I think there's a place in it for the younger kids, of course. 
I'm just more in the recovery period and how many pitches did you throw today? And, the, and if you break certain barriers, as you know, Bob, you, you just have to take a day off or two days off or four days off, depending upon how many pitches you threw that day. No question. And, and you've worked with Joel Zemai, Dan Heron, uh, I think Clayton Kershaw is on your website of, of guys, Matt Garza as well. You've worked with different colleges, Cal State Fullerton, uh, Jim Lefevre, you know, major league coaches. I mean, who, who else? I mean, are, are most of these guys receptive? Are organizations becoming more receptive as they're seeing the results that your, your products are producing? Well, you know what, two years ago, um, we first met with the Texas Rangers, and I could honestly say, and I've done this for 20 years, there was about three or four organizations that either promoted long toss or were receptive to it. Mm -hmm. um, in the last two years, because we fortunately we got a lot of press from the Rangers, which was great um, for our crusade, but uh, there's close to 15 teams now that either promote long toss or are extremely receptive to it. So the answer is, um, uh, I'm, I'm really happy to be able to say this, but uh, a lot has changed in the last two years. And not only that, but because of kids like Trevor Bauer out there and some other kids that are projecting the first round, I do feel like now that this is a hot topic, and I feel like organizations, I sat, for instance, with a, an assistant GM of one of the 120 organizations, and as we were watching Bauer's pregame a few weeks ago, he, he point blank said to me, I want our organization on this program immediately, and he's got to go through some you know hoops first, but so there are so many factors now that are really starting to kick this thing in gear, and you know the cool thing is, is that as you know, because you did it as well, that we're going back to nature, man. We're just going back to what the arm would do if no one said a word or no one had a theory. It's just what the <laughs> arm is conditioned to do. It's inherent, and that's the beauty of watching someone long toss. They're, they're not, you know, it seems extreme to someone that's on a 120-foot program, but to someone that doesn't know any better, it's natural. And, and that's why you long toss so much when you play it. I long toss much when I played. Uh, it makes the arm feel better. <laughs> no question about it. How about for non-pitchers as well? I mean, would there be hope for a guy like Jason Bott, or, or is it no, no <laughs> chance for some of those old infielders? Uh, you know, the thing about Jason is all he has to do is uh, spend about a week doing some tubing and some long toss. And fortunately for him, uh, I guess just because he hung around me for a long enough period of time throughout the most of uh, he'll – He'll get his arm in shape in no time. <laughs> Jason Bunt, my producer, Channel 4, and former teammate of Alan Jager. Alan, we got to wrap it up. I wish we could talk further. We'll have you on again before the year is over. But if people want to find out more about your program and what you guys are doing up at Jager Sports, where can they find some more information? The simplest way is Jager Sports, J-A-E-G-E-R, JagerSports.com. That's the easiest way to find us. Awesome, man. Hey, say hi to Jim Batcher. For